Hi, my name is Esh Malamte. I and my team went to Shari, that's the hanging village, for the second time to shoot a documentary based on a couple of suggestions I had after a lot of people watched my first video um, I made about Shari. So we went there during um, the Good Friday holiday and the idea was to you know film a documentary so shiari is about let me just um, go to google maps and search for shiari so if you are in accra and you want to go to shiari it's around 300 and something kilometers uh, let me just um, search for that get directions starting point should be let me just make starting point accra more so if your starting point is accra more you have two routes to get to Shiari. The first route is to either go through Peki and then the other route is to go through Ho. So if you are going through Peki, um, that is you go through um, Akusumbo, um, Pong Akusumbo, Japan, Peki and so on. The kilometers or the total distance is around 363 kilometers and that's about 6 hours 51 minutes. So that's close to 7 hours to get to Shiari. And if you are going from um, still from Accra Mall through the whole road, that's going to take you about 7 hours 8 minutes. So that's like 410 kilometers. One thing you need to know is that the Peki Road, after you drive for some time, um, you would meet uh, an untarded road, which is going to take you like about 10 to 15 minutes to cross that part. And there are a lot of such road around that side, but it's a bit faster compared to that of the whole road so for the whole road there isn't any part of the road which i can say is fast so throughout the entire journey it's a very good road that's the whole road but of course the distance as well as the time you're going to take is going to be very um, important so you decide where you want to go through so you can get to sherry using a public transport or a private transport so if you are using a public transport there is the vision bus terminal which is um, available at Accra Rollins Park. As of the last time I boarded the bus, the fare was 60 cities. I don't know if it's still the same now. So the bus um, departs from Accra to Inquanta, not Shiari. So you have to board a bus to Inquanta. And it's about going with the bus, it's about eight hours journey because of a couple of stops they have to make along um, the journey. And then also the bus mostly departs from Accra around 2 p.m. So they're likely to get to Inquanta around somewhere around dawn or maybe midnight or sometime close to midnight. That's the experience I've personally had so far. But if you are going with a, a private transport, there's no stop. That depends on if you are not having any stops. So you have a, you know um, about seven hours um, journey ahead of you. That's if you're starting from Accra. So as I said, we set off from Accra on the Good Friday and um, the idea going around that time was because of the holiday we had on both the Friday and the Monday. So the plan was to go on Friday, um, spend Saturday um, filming something as well as Sunday and then return on Monday very early so we can, you know, get back to our activities on Tuesday and so on. So that was the plan. We set off from Accra around 8 to 9, getting to 9, between 8 and 9 early in the morning and um, our first stop we made was around at Timpoku. we bought some items over there and then we continued our journey all the way through to Enquanta so I was driving at my job throughout the journey we made just one stop and that was just about it it was a good journey I should say and um, we arrived at Enquanta somewhere around close to 3 p.m. and we went to the guest house we were supposed to lodge at so we got there, checked in, and then after about 30 minutes, we went to um, a nearby village close to Inquanta to eat something. So I happened to know um, people about this. So we went there to eat something, and then we planned our journey for the next two days. Because this journey was a bit, should I say, official, we had kept um, the people in the village involved and um, informed that we were coming. There was a need to, you know, do some practice, some, should I say, customs or tradition. So we had to get a bottle, two bottles of snaps, which we had to present to the elders that um, we've come. We to clear the path for us to proceed with whatever we wanted to do. So we got that on a Friday night. And on Monday early morning, around 5.30, we departed from um, that Sinquanta and then left for Shiari. So we got to Shiari. Interestingly, from Sinquanta to Shiari is like about 30 minutes 
drive it's not so far so we got there um around seven something we had some slight delays before getting today so we got to sherry around seven um something and then we had to climb up the hill to you know um, get to the eldest um you know place to seek for permission or to inform them that we have come and then if whatever was there they kept us you know to keep us informed before we could proceed to um, film unfortunately we didn't film every aspect of the journey because um you know our main focus was to get to share we film our documentary then we are good to go so you may be seeing some of the footage but not all so we got to um Chiawi. we climbed up and after getting to the top i noticed that i forgot one of my gears so i had to come all the way down to the car um, to get it i came with Curtis, so you see a video of that and then after getting it we went back to the top hi this is ishmalamti my second time Kino, God. my second time coming to Shari. my first time and it already sucks it doesn't he started it does He's tired. We are both tired. No, he's tired. I'm just Everyone panting. Tired. I'm just panting. I'm not tired. So, we came this time to film a documentary. And we have to go to the top. I'm actually tired. Uh, we've, done, we've done just like five minutes of walking up. We actually went up and came back down because we left some of our gear in there. And the car we brought. So, there was no, a need no, for no, us. No. no. There was a need for us he to. He left his gear, and there was a need I for us had to be the good friend to go back and go with him downstairs to get it downhill. Child, I'm tired. To get it. Did you take my water? This is it, right? Yeah. Okay. So we are going back up there to meet the elders, seek permission, let them know our purpose of coming here, and then we go ahead to film, go around and film a couple of things. I'm tired. And I'm going to run out of iced water soon. Because, yeah. I'm glad. So, yeah. That is why we are here today. It's no joke at all. Climbing and descending this. And I must say, it wasn't easy climbing up. Like, after doing about five minutes of walk or climbing, it was, I was just panting. We were both panting. And, uh, yeah, we were very, very tired. And we needed a lot of water to be able to continue um, our climb. So we got to the elders and um, we had to inform them about our mission coming to Sherry. So I had something to film at there and after everything they uh, voiced out their concerns, their challenges. We went out to um, you know do random shots of the place. So we did fly the drone to capture you know have an aerial shot of the place as well as did some close-ups and yeah, so we filmed a couple of things um, during the Saturday and we were daring enough to go to the waterfalls. What I couldn't um, achieve the last time, this time around, we made it to the waterfall. So it was about um, 30 to 40 minutes walk from the village to the waterfalls. And I was right, the path wasn't um, you know, easy to go by. It was a bit scary. And I actually adopted uh, a way or method I use in going about um, walking along the path to get to the, um, the falls. The method was not to look down, just keep your eyes on the path. My shoes, I was well prepared, my shoes were good. Um, I was well versed for that particular um, walk or hike. So we went through the path and got to the waterfalls. And when we got to the waterfalls, it felt very refreshing, you know, the breeze over there. And I was very daring enough also to fly uh, my drone over there. Finally, I've been able to make it to the waterfalls. So it's behind me. So there are two waterfalls, the lower one or the small one. And then this happens to be the big one. Uh, it was quite a journey going up and down. And yeah, so taking some nice photos. Um, it's really, really, really been worth it being able to come here. I'm so much excited about it today. I came very prepared and I conquered. So I came, I saw, I conquered. So I'll do some you know, shots over here and uh, we take our, our leave away from the waterfall. So those two were so much uh, interested in seeing the falls. Today you get to see the falls and 
live access. This is um, there was, you know, this um, water coming from the rocks from the top. There were leaves uh, or trees up, which wasn't it wasn't a clear place to fly a drone. But I can't walk um, about 40, 30 to forty minutes and not get something. So I got out my drone and then filmed something from the force. And then after that, we relaxed over there for some time and then returned back to the village. Is it really, really cool? Yeah, so yeah. Oh, so that's why we have you. I know, right? So, you must be a couple of So, when we got to the village, we um, had something to eat, and then night was approaching. We did some, you know, a few shots. So one interesting thing about this um, village is if you are looking for network connectivity to make phone calls, you need to climb up all the way to this point to be able to get um, network reception. So you see these guys behind me, they're actually um, trying to get network. So there's someone uh, on top of the tree over there. I don't know if you can see him. Uh, let's see. Let me just... He's, yeah, he's somewhere over there trying to get network connectivity uh, to make some phone calls. So that's uh, some of the challenges they do face um, here and um, yeah hopefully see more things from here before we um, depart from here so that's just about it so we journeyed all the way to the top to the very last building um, that is at the very top and this happens to be the building and so far I think uh, it's one of the buildings that I see painted uh, at this uh, so it's just behind uh, where you get into connectivity is just a bit behind there. I'm tired. Yeah, yeah, you've got to whatever you now. Alright, cool. Okay, so I just got like what? One bar, Vodafone. 2G, Vodafone. MTN still sucks though. Really? Seriously? You have yeah. to say that in my video? It does. Okay. It's anyway. not the best. Because, you know... Masa, we are not talking about, we are not doing a no, trek review over here. Right. No, so listen. we just came all the way to the top no. uh, to see the very last building of this place. Bye-bye. The night was approaching also, so um, we uh, had to go look at where we'll be, you know, taking our sleep. So, um, yeah, we had some, you know, decent, well, decent places to um, sleep over for tonight. But we, during the night, um, unfortunately, we were not allowed to film anything during the night. I think... Their most concern had to do with the the drones. So during the night, the thing we were able to film was around the church because it was a Good Friday. Um, they had some, you know, service church service that is a Catholic church, and we joined them, filmed part of their bonfire and then their procession, and that was just about it. So we came back to the place where we were lodging, and then you know had some chats, and we retired to. Bit. So that was uh, it for the Friday and then the Saturday. Now on Sunday, early in the morning, we decided to you know um, pay the church a visit. So we went to the church, filmed part of their service, and I think that was um, basically what more we wanted to film. And after that, we departed from the village. We came back to Enquanta and uh, we spent the night at Enquanta. But during the night, we had to you know also um, sit out, you know have a couple of conversations among ourselves and um, you know retire to bed in the evening so that was how the journey was so i went to three people that's um Ketters, victor and jima so Ketters and um, jima happened to be um, videographers so they helped in filming um, during the journey and victor happens to be uh, a good should i say story writer story developer uh, or script writer so um, I had to get him involved because, you know, in preparing or putting together the documentary, we need to, you know, all put our minds together, brainstorm a couple of things and then um, come up with how everything um, is going to look. So, Sheila also joined us. Um, Sheila was with me the first time. She also joined us during the second time. You know, it was a very successful journey. I very much enjoyed myself as well as those I went with. So when we were returning, that was on the Monday morning, we decided not to go through the same 
uh, route we use. So when we're going, we use the Peki through to Have, um, Beve and all those you know um, towns before getting to Hawaii and then um, KJB then through to Mkwanta. But when we're coming back, we came through the um, using Ho and I must say it felt very very rewarding using that particular um, you know route. So it was it was a very nice road. It was my first time personally driving along that particular road and, and I must say if you are a new person driving over there it is very very advisable to drive during the day not in the evening because there are a lot of very dangerous caves in fact if you are climbing up the mountain that it's coming through um you know um for you want to go through who uh, i forgot the name of the town but there are these towns over there which has a very high high mountains and you have a very caution, a very big caution board um, telling you that they are about dangerous. I didn't count the number of caves, but there are a lot of dangerous caves over there. So you need to be very patient when climbing. And I did witness for myself the caves. Um, yes, they they are very dangerous, and uh, I'm sure I did take um, a bit of drone coverage around that side. Yes, yes so I was driving, and then I had the drone follow me through there mountains but it was a very nice route to go by and the reason why i wouldn't advise if for you to use our route if you're a new person in the evening is that if you're not so sure about where the caves are and how to go about to maneuver about the caves you might find yourself in trouble we did see about two to three cars which had got bent around that side and you know some people you know climbing up the hill don't take their time i actually witnessed um, some of them all these um you know church drivers just you know i don't know where sometimes they're in a hurry to i did witness a couple of them which wasn't so good so that is basically about it for our trip back to um Shari the second time so you should look forward to the documentary we are putting together and also we did take a couple of photos so you might um get a link to see some of these photos we took about the place and we're looking forward to your response and feedback so i can't promise for sure when exactly the documentary is going to be ready because there are a lot of things we need to put together um after we've got to the place to you know get everything we still need to put a few things together before we have it ready but it won't be long it will be ready in um, no time you get to see it and as part of that we then discover a couple of challenges being faced by the village so everything is captured in the documentary and we would look forward to people's support to help um, solve some of those problems in Shiari. One thing I did get to learn from the people in Shiari um, was a lot of people have visited them over the years and when people come, they see their condition, they make pledges that they are going to help but never show up again. So because of that, it, it was a bit difficult for them to even accept us to you know, go ahead to film whatever I wanted to film and the rest, but we were successful with that. So we don't want to be like um, those who have visited in the past and promised, pledged, and didn't do anything to help them. We want to, you know, build a difference um, in their um, their community. So we'll be pleading with you. We'll be coming to you, um, you know, now and then to seek for your support to be able to at least do something um, if not everything do something for um, this uh, village so that those who will be going there after us don't encounter any challenges or whatsoever so that is just about it for this video i'm sure it's even a bit lengthy but kindly pardon me this is just a summary of what happened and share during our second visit in case you are new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet kindly go ahead and hit on the subscribe button and then don't forget to hit on the bell so that anytime I have a new video, you get to see it. So once again, my name is Eshmo Lamte. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.